Should we buy or sell the Global Materials ETF? So first off, read this disclaimer carefully. Of course, do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. Here is the ETF we are talking about, the Global Materials, 25% from the 52-week low, 14-ish percent away from the highs. We start here with the weekly data points, and we can go pretty far back. This uh, ETF obviously moves in big up and down trends, uh, so it sort of has its own bull and bear markets within a global bull or bear market, uh, frankly. The recent move has been pretty strongly bullish, a bunch of weeks in a row with an uptrend. If we go back, we can see that there's a bit of a tendency for there to be cooldowns after big moves up. So that would be the primary assumption. Looking at the daily data points, we have a breakout above the 200 daily moving average. But in and of itself, that hasn't been like a clear, uh, safe signal to go along. In those times, it didn't work out. In this case, we did have a bit of a strong move, but then it just um, petered out, so it's uh, it, uh, this ETF has a massive rel relationship with the 200 daily moving average. Looking at weekly RSI, PPL, and MACD, uh, we aren't really overbought yet, so there could be, could be more left in the bullish move. Looking at the daily data points, so let's uh, look at more of the data here. Looking at MACD, we do have a rare, rare signal. We don't go higher. We just don't. It's not really a thing. Looking at RSI, daily RSI in this case, um, more often than not, we do see pullbacks and actually even revisit the lower end of RSI after these big moves. However, there have been some occurrences, like back here, where we ha we we can stay significantly overbought and only have temporary pullbacks. Yeah, same thing here with the MACD. We do have pretty, pretty you know, excessive signals now. And looking here at accumulation distribution, yeah, it's so it's not really corroborating this rally. In this case, I write overbought as the entry signal. Uh, minus 5 to the bears here on the technicals. Looking at the seasonality. Uh, to the left here, um, so over the last 5 years in green, 7 years in blue, 10 years in red, um, we usually see some more strength here into um, late the last part of the year, December. But looking here at the table to the right at December over a bunch of years, we do see that since 2017, December has, has a tendency to be bullish. So that's obviously bullish. January, um, recently it's been uh, clearly bearish. Going back here to 2014, you can see that it's actually been quite strongly bearish. I think I will give this slightly to the bulls with a 2, um, but yeah, uh, it only is a 2. The coming month around the corner, January, January simply, I mean, as you saw in to the left there, it's a bit too bearish, uh, so there's not going to be people who will make like a big bull seasonality move on the MXI, it just doesn't. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but yeah, it, there's some bullishness there, but um, very much had the last part of the bull move. Looking at uh, the fundamentals, uh, here you can see MXI versus the WT. The WT is the total stock market ETF. Here to date, MXI is outperforming WT substantially. Beta is only a bit higher. Uh, PE is significantly higher, 23.9 versus uh, versus 16.5. Yield 186% versus 1.59%. Now, if we look here at the holdings, uh, you can see um, you know some well-known uh, big companies here to the left and also the right. 
Yeah, so process so what these uh, subsectors mean, it can be a bit difficult to pin down. Um, so yeah, it's it's more about looking at the general pattern here. And obviously a sector ETF will be specialized on uh, the sector. But of all the sector, well, basic materials ETF, uh, the MXI is definitively the broadest. Um, so in this case, I do think I will give this one slightly to the bears with a minus two. Here we are looking at, uh, you know, the MXI against uh, the WT, the total stock market ETF. 96% positive correlation. Let's actually look, look at it against the XLB, which is the most heavily traded material CTF. Uh, in that case, you see that we have a 96% positive correlation. Against the total bond market ETF, we have minus 6% on the daily date points, you know, short term. 80% with the WT, 57% positive with the BNDX, 98% positive with XLB. So yeah, the strongest correlation we do get is with the XLB. Yeah, and let's actually compare yeah, it against the XLB. Um, yeah, I think we can do that. So let's do go here, XLB. So that's where you have the strongest correlation. So whether you compare it against the WT or the XLB, um, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, you could argue for both, but let's look at XLB now because uh, the M MXI might be a bit esoteric as a trading instrument. So here is the XLB, a strong rally here as well, uh, punched uh, through the blue 100 weekly moving average. Uh, we have gotten into a level where uh, there is a cluster of these horizontal resistance levels, and that is, it's of course possible to break through it, but it's much easier to make the move that we recently had, because there's not that much resistance. Now we are entering a territory that is just dicey and could be, you know, more, more turbulence basically. Looking at the, the daily data points here, we are seeing some uh, signs here of deterioration. deterioration. The purple 20 daily moving average has supported the, the rally, but on Friday we closed clearly below it. Looking at weekly RSI and the PPOs, not in like crisis territory yet. On the daily data points, uh, let's go and look at, at all the data, well, at least more data. So going back here to 2015, uh, the current MACD reading that we had was very abnormal. We usually don't go that high up, looking at daily RSI. Uh, going back here all the way to 2018, it's rare for us to go higher on daily RSI, and also the PPOs were pretty stretched. So basically, we did have a bit of a red alert signal here uh, to the bulls. They pushed it pretty darn far, and we are seeing the breakdown in effect. Now, looking at the seasonality here to the left, uh, you see that the seasonality here is a bit weak to the left here. Uh, to the right, looking at the table view. Uh, December, going back here to 2014, um, we're going back 10 years here to uh, 2012. It's definitively a mixed bag. You can't really safely bullish or bearish. Looking at the most recent uh, time frame, um, if you look here at the last five years, back to 2017, then you could make a case that December can be pretty bullish. But when it is bearish, like in 2018, it is really bearish. So December is not a month where you can feel very confident that you will get the bullish move. Uh, January is definitively rather bearish, especially recent, recently it's been pretty bearish. A bit of a green period here from 2017 to 2019, but before that it was vicious, so January is weak. And to the left here you can see this waterfall trend here in January. I will give the bulls a 1 on relative performance. 
Uh, if, if we look here at you know MXI against uh, the XLB, we can see that uh, the MXI has been in a, in a pretty strong downtrend, but it's now seeing a bit of a counter trend rally. When we go here to the daily data points, uh, we see that we have some breakouts recently uh, between yeah. Yeah, autumn 2022, the current year, uh, recently, uh, there's a bit, a bit, been a strong move. We are approaching dangerous territory on RSI. Looking at seasonality, we do see that December, going back here to 2016, been pretty favorable for the MXI, meaning it usually outperforms the XLB, and January here is pretty strongly green for the MXI. A period of outperformance. It is, however, very important to be aware that if you have two securities that go down, meaning you would lose money if you have them in your account, if one of them loses less in a relative performance chart, it's going to look as if one is going up. It is going up against the one that is losing more, but in terms of your account, you could lose on both. So that's very important to be aware of when it comes to those types of charts. So we have time left. Let's look at some of the components within this ETF, the MXI. We have Linda PLC. Uh, yeah, it is listed on the NICE. So let's look at Linda. So in this case, we do see a pretty strong move, but a bit of a bat because this is clearly a bit of a double topish pattern doesn't mean we cannot get a breakout it's just that why are we selling off instead of having a breakout you know uh, we could have broken out but instead we see profit takers and bears doesn't mean it's impossible to go out there and smash through the ceiling it's just that this isn't the way to do it you know <laughs> It just isn't. You go higher. You don't pull back. Now let's look a bit at RSI and PPL. Was that the trigger? So here are the weekly data. We did get pretty high here on the weekly PPL and RSI. So there were some risk signals on the daily data point. Yeah, we were pretty overbought here where we had when we had this pullback. MACD was also yeah, it was pretty high across the board. Looking at the seasonality here over the last five years in green, seven years in blue, 10 years in red. Yeah, it's a bit mediocre for the current month, uh, December. And going 10 years back here to 20, the, yeah, 2012. Um, it's been more green than red, but when it has been red, it's been potentially very red. Uh, looking at January over the same, same time frame, it's more bearish than bullish. Uh, so let's look here at the uh, this data as well, uh, the fundamentals. So the price book ratio here is very high relative to its history. Uh, the price to sales, it's been higher, but it's not exactly low either. Price earnings ratio is a bit lowish, but it's not like, Deep value and the yield is 1.55 percent, which also is not really, uh, not really spectacular in terms of yield. Uh, let's look a bit here at the analyst price uh, targets, the projections. So here you can see the forecasts. Uh, so 28 analysts are covering the stock. So the average price target is 3.72 percent above us, which is it's above us, but it's not like a big move. Uh, and it wouldn't be like a big breakout move, which is basically what we need. The highest price target is 14.39% above us. That would be, you know, a solid breakout. But there is, you know, the lowest target is minus 22% below us. So overall here, the price targets are not really that... They don't increase the probability of a full bore breakout for Linda. So we looked at MXI, Global Materials ETF, in detail. Uh, and we also looked here at Linda, which is the biggest uh, component of that ETF. And Linda, it's seen a big move, but, you know, 
when I see a chart like this, I think of a move that I missed. Uh, I then start to think of what is the next opportunity. And based on the data we did get from Linda, it doesn't seem like this is the greatest time for it to actually have that big breakout and new all-time high. Sure, it could happen, but numerous data points suggest otherwise. 